subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. If Captain Vikram Batra had been invented by a Bollywood writer, we might have dismissed him as too good to be true. He was a man of uncommon valor who died at the age of 24 in combat and was posthumously awarded the Paramvir Chakra. A man so unabashedly filmy that when his girlfriend Dimple Chima brought up marriage, he simply cut his thumb and put blood in the parting of her hair, anointing her his bride. A man who was described by those who knew him as a Yaro Ka Yar. A man who immortalized a cola slogan by making it his victory catchphrase, Ye Dil Mange More. This was a life made for the movies. So why isn't Shersha more rousing, more potent, more gutting? Perhaps because director Vishnu Vardhan and writer Sandeep Srivastav choose to recount Batra's life. Snatches of childhood, his college romance, his first stint as a newbie lieutenant in Sopor instead of his finest hour, the Kargil War in 1999. The screenplay is set up as a TED-style talk that Vikram's identical twin brother Vishal is delivering. The story then flashes back to the stubborn courage that Vikram displayed even as a young boy. There are flashbacks within flashbacks as Vikram recounts his love story. Vishal's voice comes in occasionally for exposition. The entire first hour is a build-up to Kargil. This clunky structure doesn't allow the film to accrue tension or exert a grip. It doesn't help that the romance between Vikram and Dimple, played by Kiara Advani, is rendered in a generic way. This was a bond so intense that after Vikram's death, Dimple chose not to marry. But it's portrayed here in the standard Bollywood fashion with the two exchanging flirtatious banter in Punjabi inflected Hindi that comes and goes and giving each other swoony looks as Ratna Lambia by Tanish Bhakchi plays in the background. One scene in which Dimple rebels against her father refusing to marry anyone but Vikram gives the character a burst of life but we have little insight into either what makes her tick or the depth of this relationship. The film comes to life in the second hour once the battle begins. The Kargil war took place at an altitude of 17,000 feet. The Sher Shah crew doesn't make it to those heights, but much of the film is shot on location and their rigorous work shows in the combat sequences. Vishnu and DOP Kamaljeet Negi use handheld cameras to give us a sense of the chaos of war. The swirling dust and explosives, blood and broken bodies, and despite the horror, the sense of purpose and adrenaline that enables ordinary men to be heroes. This could have been an opportunity for shrill chest thumping and Pakistan bashing, but mercifully Vishnu and Sandeep offer a more restrained patriotism. Of course, the enemy soldiers are simply cannon fodder. There is a close-up of the Pakistani flag lying on the ground as Indian soldiers leap over it. The screenplay also makes place for Vikram to deliver a whistle-worthy dialogue before shooting a soldier to death. But naked aggression and villainizing is avoided. The film also attempts to show us the plight of the Kashmiri people, caught between the army represented by a few good men and the militants who are brutal and murderous. Which of course is a simplistic take on a complex geopolitical tragedy that continues to unfold. The intentions are laudable but it feels tokenistic because the writing isn't detailed enough. What's also missing is a sense of the larger picture. The Kargil War was India's first televised battle. It brought the terror of combat into our homes. I still remember watching Barkhadat bravely giving us news from the front lines while explosives landed behind her. But the film doesn't zoom out and offer context on the politics of the time, which weakens the impact. The screenplay is designed to consistently reconfirm Vikram as a brave heart who doesn't have a cautious bone in his body. The other soldiers often remark on his unstinting courage and even actively dissuade him from taking the risks that he does. Vikram's commanding officer wonders why his brother didn't also join the army because then there would have been two daredevil Batra brothers serving the country. Key moments from Vikram's life are repeated at the end almost as if the makers don't trust the viewers to remember that Vikram was a hero. The beats are so obvious that when a soldier longingly looks at the photo of his six-month-old daughter and talks about holding her for the first time, you know he's going to die. To get a sense of the pathos of men killing each other and the sacrifices that they and their families make, find a song called Hoke Majboor Mujhe Usne Bhulaya Hoga from Hakikat released in 1964 and arguably the best war film made in this country. 
A group of fatigued soldiers sing about their loved ones, their faces haunted by what they have endured. It's superb. Interestingly, Sher Shah also features a scene in which we see the cost of war. The soldiers sit weeping for a fallen comrade. And Vikram declares through his tears, Ye war badi kutti cheez hai yaar. Which is a sobering and necessary counterpoint. Vishnu also nails the battle for point 4875 in which Vikram lost his life. The lengthy action sequence is staged and edited by A. Srikar Prasad with palpable tension. When Vikram finally falls, you feel the blow. And Siddharth Malhotra playing Vikram summons the right emotions and expressions for the moment. Siddharth doesn't have the actorly heft yet to match what Vicky Kaushal did in Uri, but he pulls off this role with a combination of sincerity and charm. There is an easy amiability about him which offsets the bloodshed around him. I also enjoyed Shiv Pandit's performance as Jimmy and Raj Arjun as Raghunath, both part of Vikram's battalion. Ultimately, Sher Shah plays it too safe. The film doesn't have the daring of its subject. But Vikram Batra's story is so stirring that it rises above this. When Sher Shah ends with footage of the real Vikram laughing and talking about the battle, you inevitably get goose flesh. You can watch Sher Shah on Amazon Prime Video. For more reviews like this, subscribe to Film Companion and don't forget to check out our website filmcompanion.in.